Hey everyone, Cal Ewing here coming at you from my Ninja Turtle sewer that I use to uh, hide the mess that is my office. <laughs> um, I am back with another episode of Note Deals of the Week. Uh, but I got an interesting one today. This is a note that I've been working on this past week, uh, doing my due diligence. And it's something that looked pretty promising. And I'm going to share kind of where I'm at with it and discuss, you know, what I think my bid's going to be if the seller's asking price is going to be a fit and just kind of what the exit plan would be for a note like this. All right. So I'm going to dive right in and share my screen right now. All right, so this is a non-performing mortgage note in Amarillo, Texas. First thing that comes to mind for me, being a child of the 90s, is George Strait's Amarillo by morning. All right, so that's uh, what piqued my interest, is my connection to that song as a kid. I, I promise I won't sing to you anymore the rest of this call. <laughs> but anyways, um, but let's get into this deal. So Amarillo, this property is kind of up in the northwest, just outside of Amarillo, Texas. It's a little bit out in the country, I guess you could say a little bit rural, uh, 1.5 acres. I'll, I'll show you the property in a second. Um, but that's its relation to the city itself. And I like to buy notes that are in close proximity to a major center. Uh, I don't like looking at notes that are way out in the boonies where it's impossible to get realtors or contractors or anything out to the property or very difficult I want to have close access to a potential team if we ever had to take the property back and do renovations or list it or whatever. Um, I want it to be easy to get to the property. So this, this is close enough to a, a major center that it's fine for me. And for those of you that don't really know your geography of Texas, which is probably lots, um, it's not the most well-known location, uh, this is up. Um, it's on uh, I-40, which is a interstate that connects Los Angeles to Wilmington, South Carolina. So it's like the number three longest interstate in the U.S., kind of in between Oklahoma City and Albuquerque. Okay, so the property itself um, is one and a half acres, as I said, and it actually consists of two manufactured homes. So there's the one we're going to see in the Google Street View, the main home. Uh, but then they have another one in behind, which you can't see from Google. But there's actually two manufactured homes on this property, which adds value, right? Um, obviously, there's two, two dwellings plus a large garage. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So you can see the garage here. It looks like there might even be two garages. Uh, here's the main home, and then there's one in behind that you can't really see from the street view. Um, so the tax assessed value is 433875 and the note seller, they had done their due diligence. Um, they've actually ordered two BPOs, which are broker price opinions of value, uh, which what that is, is a real estate broker would go out or an agent would go out and they're actually looking at the property condition from the outside. They're not going in, uh, but they're looking at it from the outside and then doing the same as a realtor would do for um uh, oh my gosh, lost my mind. Uh, CMA, comparative market analysis. So they would look at recent sales of similar properties close by and then uh, active listings to determine the value of the property. And so um, there was one taken, I'm recording this in April, 2024. There's one taken last July. Uh, they came up with a value of 436,000 and they considered both uh, manufactured homes into that value which is pretty close to the tax assessed value. And then they did another BPO with a different company in November. And for some reason, that company only included the one unit, this first one, um, in their assessment of value for 275,000, okay? But that gives you a rough idea. Uh, for now, we're gonna use 436 as the value. Okay, so this note uh, originated uh, October of 2022, so a fairly recent note, only a couple years in, and the original balance is 129.255, a 30-year note at 5.5% interest. Okay, amortized over 30 years, and so that borrower's monthly payment, principal and interest only, uh, 7.33.90. Okay, there's also an escrow tax and insurance escrow being collected. Okay, so that's the original loan on this property, the original mortgage secured to this piece of property. 
we'd be looking at buying this mortgage note, okay? So currently, this is a non-performing note, which means the borrowers have stopped making their payments. Okay, they're behind. Uh, they owe, just on the principal balance only, 127811 And But if you factor in uh, back payments, right, the late payments, late fees, uh, maybe there's some uh, behind on tax escrow, things like that, the total amount that they owe to the lender is 138.5, okay? And they last made their payment in September of 2023. So if we forward this to May 1st, which is coming up in two weeks, um, as of recording this video, um, they're going to be eight months delinquent, okay? Um, I asked the lender what their foreclosure status was, if they'd started the foreclosure process, and they said that they're pending first first legal action, so they've they're, they've started it, but they're barely into the process. And so um, probably by the time if we were to buy this note, you know, by the first of May, uh, we'd be, be able to start foreclosure and have this thing sold either the the June or the July auction. Okay. So Texas, if you don't know, is a very fast foreclosure state. It's the fastest one, so you can foreclose, you know, in a few months, um, which is great for a lender. And the cost is is really affordable as well. Um, about I factor in usually about twenty five hundred for foreclosure costs, and um, it's a non judicial state which allows you to foreclose really quickly. Okay. Now I did get this information from the lender that owns this note right now that the borrower was seeking a, a loan modification, uh, but for whatever reason the lender declined that. Okay, so they do want to try and get this loan current. Okay, so um, I've been trying to negotiate with this seller, trying to figure out what the what the note seller or the lender that owns this loan, uh, what do they need to sell this at? Um, and they came back to me that they need about one hundred ten thousand. Okay, I was trying to get them to go lower, but they wouldn't budge at one ten. So I'm going to run the numbers here for you guys at a purchase price. So if we were to buy this note for one hundred ten thousand, what does this deal look like? Okay. So 110 would be 86% of the unpaid principal balance. So just the principal owing on that mortgage loan, 86% uh, of 127.8, okay? It would be 79% of the total payoff, right? Because I told you there's back payments, late fees, that kind of thing as well. Uh, and then 25% of the property value um, if we're going to use that 436 number, okay? So... Um, from this point point of view, there's a ton of equity behind you. So there's in that respect, it's very low risk. Um, you know, if you had to foreclose and sell off the property, you're good. You know, you're going to get your money back. Okay, so what options do we have if we buy this loan? So um, number one, complete the foreclosure. Okay, especially Texas, super fast. We can get this done by the summer. Um, you know, obviously the, the borrower could, um, stretch out, try to stretch out this foreclosure. They could, um, you know, hire a, an attorney themselves, try and prolong it, um, try to delay it, find ways to, you know, uh, cancel it essentially. That's always a risk, but, um, a lot of times at this price point, you know, borrowers don't really have the ability and the means to, you know, pay an attorney to string out a foreclosure for months and months and months, which is why, I like the kind of lower end notes more than like the 500 to a million dollar notes where these borrowers are wealthy and they can you know afford to pay an attorney to stretch out the foreclosure, okay? They could also file bankruptcy, which could take longer uh, and speed up the process. That's always a, an option they may have. Um, bankruptcy is not always a bad thing though if we own the note, okay? So that's option one and we're gonna discuss that in the next slide. Um, the other option we might have is to negotiate cash for keys or a deed in lieu of foreclosure, okay? So what this means is we go to the, the current borrowers and say, look, we own the note now. Uh, we're gonna go to foreclosure here. You can either go through the foreclosure and then now have your credit impacted for the next seven years, making it tough to buy a new property, even rent a property, get a car loan, et cetera, okay? Or we can skip all of that um, and we can just do a deed in lieu where we'll give you, you know, five grand to move. Um, you leave the property in its current condition. You don't destroy it. And we're going to give you 5,000 and you deed us the property back. You just basically give us the property. Okay. So that's always an option as well. And then what do we do? Well, if we now own the property, we can either just list it and sell it off. Uh, we could put tenants in it. Um, we could 
owner finance again, create a brand new note, et cetera. So there's lots of options there. Okay. And then the last option is, you know, what the borrowers actually were hoping to do, which is work with them to try and get them current, get them performing again through a loan modification. And so what that would typically be, um, you know, I haven't talked to the borrower or anything, but we'd probably want to get them current up front. So we'd want them to come to the table with some cash. And I would prefer to have them pay that eight months of back payments. And then we'll re reinstate the mortgage and then they can keep making their payments. Okay. Um, but some sort of trial payment plan where they, they have to prove that they can be consistent borrowers before we would modify the loan in any way. So options there as well. And then that's more of a cash flow long term investment. Okay, so let's look at the foreclosure option because that seems to be the path that this current lender is taking with this property and this note. Um, so, as I mentioned, the value we think is around 436. The borrowers owe 138.5 in total payoff. Okay, so let's assume that it goes to the foreclosure auction. Uh, we would start the bidding at you know 138.5, the amount for the total payoff. And in this case, if the property is worth 436, you'd imagine that someone's going to bid this up well beyond the 140, right? Let's just round it to 140. You're going to assume that they're going to bid it up high, right? Especially Texas real estate, uh, one and a half acres. So I'm going to assume just being super generous here that they're going to bid 300. Um, it could go even higher. Um, but what how this affects a mortgage lender is that we don't really care how much it sells for as long as it's above the total payoff, because that's the only amount we can recover as the lender. So anything over and above that it sells for, um, then that is the borrower's equity that they can actually recover after the foreclosure auction, as long as they don't have a second mortgage or other liens. Okay. Um, so that's not, doesn't really affect us because all we're able to recover if it sells at the auction is the 138.5. And that's assuming, I'm just going to go back. That's assuming we can prove this total payoff that we have evidence that they owe that total amount and not just the unpaid balance. Okay. So we have to make sure that the note seller can provide proof to show that they owe us that 138.5. Okay. So if it sells, as long as it sells above 140, that's the only outcome we care about. And it's easily going to do that when it goes to the auction. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so let's say they bid 300. The number really doesn't matter. It's going to be high, okay? Um, we get the 138.5. We paid 110. We pay, let's say, $1,000 for due diligence prior to buying the note. So that's for a new BPO, title search, maybe drive-bys, et cetera, okay? Um, foreclosure costs, we pay an attorney $2,500 to conduct a foreclosure. So our net profit, if you subtract all of these, would be $25,000, okay? The great thing is that's in two months. If we can foreclose by July and make twenty five dollars get our money back and, and make twenty five dollars uh, 22% ROI, but if you annualize that over a year, that's 132%, okay? So that's a pretty good outcome in a short amount of time, turning your money over real quick and making it, you know, a 25 grand profit on 110, or I guess 150 or whatever, okay? Um, so that's great, but let's look at some of the other potential outcomes. Okay, so the deed in lieu, the cash for keys where we skip the foreclosure, we negotiate with the borrower for to have them walk away from the property, deed us the property back. And then I'm just going to use the scenario of what if this happens and then we just sell the property. So we call a local real estate agent, we get them to maybe we'll clean it up a bit. So we'll spend some money just cleaning it up nice, getting rid of any junk. You can see in the overhead view, that looks like there's some junk and stuff around. So just cleaning it, getting it presentable and then listing it as is on the MLS, okay? So that's what I'm gonna present here. So I'm going to assume we're gonna pay the, the borrowers five grand to vacate, okay? 10 grand to clean out, because we got both properties to clean out plus the yard. So 10 grand to just clean it up. And, and then we're gonna sell it. I'm gonna just, again, we're gonna try and sell it at a discount, okay? If it's worth 436, I mean, maybe we could get a 436 offer. But we're all. This is all just forward projection. So I'm going to assume. Let's just say we want to sell it quick. Uh, we'll sell it for 350. Okay. And 
So at a sale price of 350, when you factor in realtor commissions, uh, title insurance, et cetera, all your closing costs, let's say 39 or sorry, 29,000 for that, um, recoup our 110 investment plus the due diligence cost before we bought the note. So we're looking at a net profit of 195,000 if we were to sell it at this nice discount. Okay. If it sells for 436, the as is value, obviously that's going to be significantly higher. Okay. And let's assume this takes a whole year. Okay. Maybe it sits on the market for a while or something. Um, so let's say it takes 12 months to get this thing sold. It's still 155% return on investment. Okay. So that is excellent. I mean, that would be for, for us as node investors, that's the most ideal situation here. But is that what the borrower is going to do? And my thoughts are not likely because they have that much equity. If the house really is worth 436 or the property uh, and their tax assessment, they're going to be seeing that statement. They're going to see 433 on the tax assessment. So they know they've got equity. Uh, are they just going to walk away and give their lender all that equity? I really doubt it. So I don't think this is probably an option. I'm not, I wouldn't move forward expecting this to be the outcome. Okay. Even though financially as an investment, it would be incredible. Okay, so let's look at the third option is working with the borrowers, getting them back on track and getting them performing again, okay? So, excuse me, in this case, they are going to be eight months behind. They owe their monthly payments 734, essentially. So times that by eight months, they would owe $5,872 to get this mortgage back on track, okay? So... Um, if they were to do that and get it current again, even if we don't do any kind of modification or anything, they, if they sold off a vehicle even, um, that's not a huge amount of money that someone could potentially come up with, okay? So I would imagine this is the most likely scenario is they would just get it current again. If we started putting pressure that we're going to foreclose, um, you know, they would get it current again, get it reinstated, and then start making their payments again, okay? Um, so if that's the case, well... We would get 58.72 in year one, okay, to get it current. That's what we would require them to pay up front uh, for us to get this thing reinstated and not foreclose, okay? So that would be income we'd make right off the bat. And then they'd start making their payments every month of 734, okay? So in first year, 12 months of this payment coming in plus this big chunk of back payments, that's a 13% return or 13% yield in year one. And now let's say that they're able to keep making those payments for year two, three, four, whatever. Um, that only in year two, that's only a 7.8% return. Okay. So that 12 months of 734 on a $110 or $110,000 investment. Okay. Okay. So let's look at these all together. Okay. So foreclosure, which seems to be the route that the current lender is taking right now. Um, return on investment, if you annualize it, because it's going to take maybe two months to get this foreclosure done in Texas, uh, this is possible, okay? So 132% return, you know, have your money back by July and what did I say, like 25 grand profit. That's pretty tempting. That's good. And it's possible that that could happen. That could be the outcome, okay? Um, the deed in lieu, as I said, very unlikely with this borrower, uh, knowing they have that much equity, They'd probably just try and sell it um, or, you know, be able to figure out some way other than to just do the deed in lieu and give us the, all of their equity. Okay. So that's unlikely. Um, the most likely, I think, because they've already been hinting at uh, potentially doing some sort of modification to get back on track. Um, if we were to pressure them to lose their property to foreclosure, they could probably sell, like I said, sell a vehicle or something to come up with those back payments and get the mortgage current again. Uh, so I think this is the most likely scenario. And 13% in year one is not bad. That's pretty good. Um, that's double digit return. So the first year would be fine. My problem is, is like the next couple of years after that, you're only making an 8% return. And to me on $110,000 investment, making 8%, I just feel like um, I could probably find better returns with that money on other no deals. Uh, where I could make consistently double-digit returns. 
And so for that reason, I actually decided I'm not going to pursue this deal at 110,000, which was the, the lending, the current lenders asking price. They said they will not go below. I tried to go down to a hundred. They wouldn't budge. So I'm actually going to walk away from this deal just because of that, because this is the most likely outcome. Now, maybe I'm being an idiot and this, this is the outcome that's actually going to happen and I'm missing it, but I think this is the most likely scenario. And so I've decided I'm not going to pursue this one. Okay. So um, I hope that was beneficial to you. Uh, I like going through these deals. They're fun walking through people, how this really works behind the scenes when you're investing in notes and looking at deals. And if you have any questions about this deal or anything I covered here, past deals, whatever, um, feel free to book a call with me at talkwithcalewing.com. Um, I'm not trying to sell any kind of mentorship package. I do have people that have asked me like, are you willing to mentor? And that's, I just don't have the bandwidth for that. Um, but I am happy to get on a call. If you've got questions about node investing or anything like that, I'm happy to, you know, give my two cents on how to get started. Or if you have a specific deal you're looking at, I'm happy to help for free um, on a, you know, half hour call. Um, if you're looking for ways to get involved in, in notes, um, we do work with funding partners um, there is some criteria there that we have to uh, vet you for, but you can also discuss that with me at Talk with Cal Ewing. My website's calewing.com. And you can also check out my YouTube channel. If you like this video and you're not on YouTube, check out my YouTube channel. I got a lot of content about mortgage note investing in real estate. So check out some of my other videos. Make sure you give it a, a follow. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, reach out with questions and we'll see you on the next one.